Hi everyone and welcome to Heartcraft Paper. My name is Monica and I'm so glad that you can join me today. This is another presentation for the Crafter's Castle Challenge. Don't forget to visit the blog. Today I'm going to be using the Tailor Made For You card special delivery Christmas set in order to make my craft. For today's project, we're going to be making a mini Christmas album. This will be interactive, so there's going to be little flip sections, inserts, pockets, as well as tags. For this, we're going to need a piece of cardstock measuring 5 by 8. We're going to be making what's called a hidden hinge binding. And basically, this is the mechanism that's going to act as our base for attaching our pages to. Next, we're going to need a three and a quarter by five and a quarter piece of chipboard. This is going to be our spine. Next, I have this black foiled um, piece of cardstock, and this particular cardstock measures six and a quarter by six and a quarter. This is going to cover our spine. We are also going to need two more pieces of chipboard and both of these are going to act as the covers. This is five and a quarter by five and a quarter. So that's going to be the front and back. We're also going to need 10 pieces of cardstock cut to five and a quarter by five and a quarter. This is going to act as our page inserts. And the reason we have 10 is because there are five of these little hinges. Next, we're going to have two pieces of six and a quarter by six and a quarter. This will be the lining for our covers, the front and back. And finally, these two little pieces, which are four and a half by four and a half, and these will act as the inner lining for our covers. This will help keep everything nice and clean. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First, we're gonna start with our binding piece. What we're gonna need for this is our score pal, or if you have a scoreboard, whatever you like. We're gonna begin by scoring our piece of paper here um, every half an inch. So we will start at half an inch from the very left all the way across. All right, we're now ready to start folding. Now you're gonna notice that this is a little bit tricky at first until you kind of get used to this, but we are going to start forming our first gusset. As you can see here, we do have the gusset and then the peak. So we're gonna first create our first gusset by folding upwards and then pinching that second line. That will create our first peak. I like to fold it over once in one direction, then the other, and that will help ease that paper's movement as we go. Then fold upwards once again, and then I'm gonna find that other um, score line and then just pinch. Again, I'm working back and forth, and we will do this for the next couple of gussets. But in the interest of time, I've already created one and um, we'll just go ahead and go for a couple more here so you have a good sample as to how these are created. With everything folded here, you can see that this is the exact replica of the binding that I have. You can see those peaks and gussets. All right, in order to create your peak, you're gonna have to add some glue onto the back of this section here. Just make sure that you add enough glue all the way across and then pinch the peak together. Run, rub over gently and make sure that it adheres well. I'll go ahead and give you another sample of what needs to be done, another gluing and pinching. Again, in the interest of time, I have already made my binding and the reason for that is because we want to make sure that we have enough time to allow this to dry and set. I don't want to start using this right away unless it's set because if I do, then it will create problems as we go. All right, moving on, we now are ready to work our spine. And as you can see here, I have my spine and my cover for that spine. What I'm going to do right now is take out my score pal or my scoreboard if you'd like, 
and we cut this to um, three and one fourth by five and one fourth. And this is actually six and one fourth. So that's three inches larger. So that means I'm going to score at one and a half on each side. And the reason being for this is that I wanted to create kind of a template of where I'm going to set that spine. So this will actually help. So we're gonna go ahead and score again, but don't press very hard, just enough that you get a line there to be able to set your board here on there. As you can see, it fits perfectly right into those lines. I'm now ready to start adhering down my chipboard. I'm gonna make sure that I have enough glue to cover the back of my chipboard. Once I have all the glue in place, I'll go ahead and lay this down. I wanna make sure that I have a half an inch from the top and a half an inch from the bottom. And as you can see, this is sitting perfectly right in between those two score lines. Okay, we're set. Now all I wanna do is kind of help ease this just a little bit. I'm going to take my score tool and just score right beside that chipboard. And what I'm doing is not only creating another demarcation, but this will also help the paper kind of fold on that spine once we get everything set together. But this is going to allow us to set our other pieces in place perfectly. I'm going to set this aside for right now. I'm ready to start working my covers, and these are the linings for the cover. Again, I am going to take out my score tool, and this is going to be to help us place our chipboard right exactly where it needs to be. So I'm just gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna score at half an inch all the way around. I'm going to repeat this process on the second sheet of paper. This is going to act as our front and one for our cover. All right, with our scoring done, we're now ready to trim off these corners at an angle. Now, please note that I am trimming this just above that little intersection. So I'm leaving a piece of that um, cross section here that you can see. And I'll show you why once we finish up here. You're gonna repeat this process with both sheets. So right now I'm creating my creases. I wanna make sure that this is going to move. So I'm gonna need my score tool or a uh, boning knife in order to make sure that these are nice and creased. All right, we're ready to start gluing. Just make sure you put enough adhesive all the way towards that um, score line so that way your paper doesn't lift off your chipboard. In order to get this exactly where I want, I'm going to use those flaps and kind of fold it over on one side and then the upper just to make sure that it's centered. I press down firmly on one side and then the other. You can use a brayer if you'd like, but I find that just rubbing right on over it and creating that bond works perfectly well by using my hand. So let me go ahead and show you before I start gluing how that corner is going to look. It is going to be perfect just because we cut a little bit further away than we would from where those intersections are. So here's that intersection. I'm just gonna press it down with my nail and it's got a little bit of an overlap. And look at that perfect corner. Now for this, you just wanna make sure you have enough glue on those tabs. Place your binder clips to allow it to dry while you work the opposite end. Then you can switch over those binder uh, clips and work the other sides. Now once this particular cover is completed, I'll repeat the same process on the other one. I'm now ready to start piecing together my album. I have my two covers here, which are beautifully set. Now all I have to do is start lining everything up. I have my spine piece, and if you remember, we came through with our um, little score tool, and that was about maybe an eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna use that as my guide. You can see that my cover just lines up there about an eighth of an inch away from that spine 
chipboard. Let's go ahead, add some glue to this, and then we're gonna adhere that down and utilize that scoring as my guide, one eighth of an inch away from the other chipboard. This allows for folding and opening and closing that album fairly easily without any butting up and causing any issues. Just make sure you press down firmly again on the one side and then the other. You wanna create that bond with the glue. We'll go ahead and repeat this process with the other side. Okay, so as you can see here, that little score tool actually fits right in between those two gaps and that's one eighth of an inch, so it's perfect. Now I'm just gonna work the paper back and forth a little bit, just lightly enough, so that way when I create my cover, or I finish creating it, the uh, paper will act as a hinge and work nicely. So here you see it's already really starting to come together. We're almost done, but you can tell we have this nice form uh, for the binder and the actual enclosure of this particular album. And all that's left now is to work these little flaps. So we're gonna score them and then we're gonna fold them over. Now I used a sharper boning knife for this to be able to create that crease. Fold it over, burnish, glue, and then use the binder clips in order to hold that down while I'm working on the other side. Now for this, I required four. And again, I'm gonna repeat that same process on the other side, just making sure that I give it enough time for that glue to set. And that's why I like using binder clips because it holds that pressure there to create the bond. So here is everything nice and neat. I'm just gonna go ahead and crease those fold overs. Again, we're stretching that paper for ease of movement. All that's left for the cover in the meantime is to actually clean this up. We have those four and a half by four and a half squares that we're gonna use to cover over this particular piece that's still exposed. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue to that and adhere it down. Make sure you press firmly so that way it creates that bond with the chipboard and the um, overlapping cardstock. So we've got a lot of progress here. I'm gonna clean this up further and add in a piece of black cardstock just because I wanna make sure that that three and a half by five and one fourth gets covered. So I cut this to three and a half by five and um, by five inches just to kind of make it look nice and neat. I'm ready to adhere my binding onto the back. I just wanna get a good measurement and look at how nice that looks. Nice and covered, nothing is exposed. All I have to do is add some glue to the back of that and then press down. Now you're gonna notice that as I set this down, I'm running my fingers in between the gussets, creating a pressure so that the glue bonds both pieces of paper down. Once I have that bond set in place, we're ready to move on and start actually creating. All right, I'm coming in with two little envelopes. This is a three by four envelope. You can make this utilizing an envelope maker um, from We Are if you want. This is a six by six cutout. I'm gonna use these as little inserts or flaps for my album. How this is going to work is I'm going to set aside two pieces of the uh, insert cardstocks. I'm gonna place my envelope just like so, and then I'm gonna adhere it down. So I'm gonna use the actual envelope flap, the closure of it, to act as a hinge, and I'm just gonna glue it in. So let's go ahead and add some glue to this and start working it in. I'm just gonna add right onto that tab there, place it down, close it over, and I have my first little insert. I'll repeat the process with the other side. Let me show you how we're gonna add our pages. We're gonna create little pockets at the top. So I'm going to add glue to one side and then the lower side, 
Okay, so this is gonna be the bottom part. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna create a little pocket for it to adhere onto that binding and then create a top pocket. So I've added glue to one side and then perpendicularly on the other side. I press down and make sure everything lines up. And excuse me, I have a little bit of glue that I got onto my album there. So I just wanna clean that up. So I'm gonna press down firmly. And as you can see, it's got this kind of odd shaped pocket. One of those sides is going to adhere right onto this binding. So I'm gonna add glue onto the binding piece on both sides. Once I have the glue in place, I'll go ahead and slip on this little piece right onto that side. So I'm doing this so that way the opening, one of the openings is up towards the top. This will create a little pocket piece. This will be something that I can insert a tag to. Now, when you're doing this, just be careful and gentle that you don't open up that bottom portion, but that little pocket piece should slip on right onto the binding. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and press down firmly, make sure that um, you do so on one side and the other, and now you have a pocket opening at the top. Just work it back and forth, press, and press on the other side. And now your mechanism is good to go. Let's go ahead and start forming the other pockets and we should be ready to start adding in our um, details and decorations once we've completed this. Now I do have to say, this was a process to make, but I actually enjoyed it very much trying to make this project. Um, and the best part about it is that it's a keepsake. So it's something that you can give as a gift. Um, you can keep for yourself and it's interactive. It's fun. It, overall, it was really something that I really enjoyed making. All right, so we are set and ready to go and start adding in some of our decorations. As you can see here, everything is nice and neat. I'm just double checking to make sure everything is firmly pressed down. Now, if you do have some glue here and there, you can find a nice glue eraser from Amazon. I think it costs about $2. You can just come in and start erasing some of that glue right off of your work. And this is really good, especially if you wanna make sure that everything is nice, is nice and neat. Um, sometimes it just happens that you get glue in places that you don't want and this is good to have around. All right, we're ready to start adding in our decorations. We're on the home stretch now. It's just adding those final details. I'm gonna start on the very first page and this one I would just wanna keep it as a decorative. So I'm not gonna add any pictures. This is a five by five piece of cardstock that matches the outside spine. I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere that down. And part of the um, package that we have here, the digital package, there's a little Santa list and it is super adorable. It has names and it's got a little check that says good, bad, and I fell in love with that. I figured that would be great for an entrance piece. Then there are also some card, um, postcards that I felt were absolutely beautiful. I love the font on them. Um, you know, it was really something that stood out to me. So I'm adding some foil accents as well. And this is a, actually a um, gold mylar. It's not paper, it's mylar. So some of the accents here um, don't actually cut through with dyes. So I used a dye to create a decoration and then fussy cut around it, which is kind of odd, but hey, this is the gold mylar again I'm adding in. And with this particular type of paper, you do have to use double-sided tape. It will not adhere with standard glue. Since it's not porous, you would have to use a glue gun or whatnot. You can make several little pockets for these and those would be good for some tag inserts, for some memorabilia. And here I'm adding in a waterfall piece. So in other words, it's going to be several pieces of paper that allow you to kind of flip through 
and they are staggered, uh, you can add some pictures, you can add some fonts, you can add whatever you'd like to these. And as you can see, one, two, three. I'm just gonna decorate that out with some crinkle binding and I did have some in red. I'm just going through kind of crinkling that up and placing it down. Here's another foil piece that I cut out into a rectangle and then passed it through my die cutting machine in order to impress that beautiful um, snowflake. So this cute little envelope that I'm working with here is a printout and this is a part of the digital pack as well as a special delivery little tag and I loved how that looked just as an accent. I'm creating some places that I can add pictures. It's got a little frame and this is glitter cardstock. I have some slanted pockets that I also created as insert and just added some embellishments with some of those ephemera from the packet as well. Um, I really did enjoy some of these images that came in the packet, um, especially these stamps. I have to say they were totally adorable. So again, you can add a lot of different elements to this, make it interactive, make it fun, you know, pockets. I'm gonna cut out some tags and just a very large tag actually, and just set those in. Here I have another place that I'm gonna add in as a picture place but I have these beautiful cutouts just for corners and that just set the whole thing. Finally, I'm decorating my cover with a simple Merry Christmas and this particular die set is from Poppy Stamps. To create the closure, I am coming in with my crocodile. I'm going to put in an eyelet, so I'm coming in and measuring out on both sides where I'm going to cut out that hole. Um, I believe I did put it in at about a quarter of an inch from the edge and just making sure that everything kind of lines up. I've put in my eyelet and now I'm just going to go ahead and snap that closed. I've got both sides here that I need to complete. So let's go ahead and get working. Now for the tie, I did decide on a beautiful chiffon um, ribbon. This is about 12 inches, give or take. Now, I kind of goofed up here by inserting both ends at the same time, but this is actually a one-ended insert. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this out. Um, once I've got that set, I will go ahead and make a knot. That will be one side of my closure. I do already have the first closure completed. The thing that's gonna close this whole entire album off is just a simple bow, but it's gonna have a total of a double ribbon or a double bow. All right, our album is now complete. Let's go ahead and have a flip through so you can have a look at just what I have. Here are my tags and you have that little pocket at the top as well. You can add some string or ribbon if you'd like to those tags um, just to make it easier to pull out, but they do stick out far enough for me that they're okay in the way that they are. See here are some pockets, you have that little envelope. I mean, there's a lot that you can actually put in there. Thank you for joining us for the Crafter's Castle Challenge. Don't forget to visit the blog and enter your challenge entry utilizing any craft that you like. It's an anything goes. For more videos and tutorials like these, don't forget to subscribe. Visit the blog for more information at www.heartcraftpaper.com. Thanks for watching Heartcraft Paper. And don't forget to hit the little bell for notifications of new videos.